Welcome to The Fit Bridge, a podcast connecting you to conversations that help bridge you to success within the health and fitness industry. Hi, friends. Keep listening if you've ever found yourself frustrated, wastefully creating endless amounts of content that don't even target your market audience, yet alone generate quality leads that turn into high-paying clients. If you've stayed up Googling how to build a brand, creating a brand voice and strategy, and top marketing techniques, fear no more. I bring you the answers to your problems. I'm your host, R.C. Hahn, and on today's episode of the FitBridge podcast, I have a conversation with Mr. Rick Winner. Now, Rick has over 20 years experience in the fitness industry, ranging from high-level management positions to being a personal training certification instructor. But what we chat about today is his role as the founder of the FitBiz Toolbox, which he created specifically for client-based business owners who are looking for the keys truly necessary to build branding, marketing, sales, and business development success. All I can say, after having had seen all of this curriculum, is damn, I wish I had all of this knowledge when I was still a trainer or really trying to sell anything. It truly is like the the Bible of go-to for branding, marketing, and sales all packed into one. Now, there's no way that I could give you all of this wisdom within just an hour conversation. So Rick has very graciously offered a discount to all listeners. So after you tap in and you're sitting there being like, tell me more, you can go to the FitBiz Toolbox and take their Sales and Marketing Academy course and get a discount by using code FIBR. That's promo code FIBR, F-I-B-R, so that you can absorb everything it is that you need to know. But for now, let's dive in and let's get started. I'm grateful you're here and I hope you take something away from today's episode. My man, Rick, so great to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Happy uh, Friday. We'll call ourselves out on the day we're recording this here. I got a fun yeah, Friday episode. Uh, might as well time stamp it. What date? Right? Uh, it's April <laughs> Fools. We're not fooling people right. here. This is going to be a real conversation. <laughs> this is not false. Everything you hear is not an April Fools joke. <laughs> Someone. Uh, but yes, looking forward to this conversation because, well, one, I might be a little bit biased on your skill set because you are the talented individual that helps produce this podcast. So That's I right. know firsthand that your skills are top notch. But what I really wanted to bring you on and have a conversation about today is this incredible course, this academy that you've been spearheading in our industry. And I felt like this has been a massive opportunity for way too long within sales, marketing you're really heavy in that marketing space, right? We have so many fitness professionals that have the science. We love the science, right? We're all about that. That's why we get into it. We want to change lives, but then we hit this roadblock and we're like, well, well, how do we do it? How do we build our brand? How do we market to people? How do we get our name out there? Right. So that we can help individuals. So I want to pass it off to you. I want you to share one. I always love to hear the story of how these companies and, and products and courses came to life. So chat with us how you came up with the Academy, this marketing course, and and your company in general. Yeah, so FitBiz was born, uh, FitBiz Toolbox was born uh, when I was in business school. Um, I had been a personal trainer, I had been a fitness manager, I had run gyms, I had, you know, I was an educator for a large big box gym where I traveled around and taught a certification, which included some business content. But that business content was selling and everyone listening will be familiar with this and how to overcome objections. Right. Right. And there was, I I can vividly remember being in a class and thinking, you know, if if I knew 10% of what I'm learning in this course in business school, I would never have to overcome objections. I would avoid objections. And that's, that's the goal of marketing. I always like to say, I I stole this quote, but it's a, it's a great quote. The purpose of marketing is to make selling easy. Hmm. Because what we spend so much time doing is we, we, we spend time in our industry telling and selling, yeah. meaning 
we're not getting information from the clients. We're not understanding the client's needs and we're not messaging to the client's needs. We're simply taking someone in saying, here's what I'm selling you, telling them what I'm going to sell you, and then trying to sell them. And in so many cases, such a high percentage of these presentations are occurring when this potential client, this member, this new member, wasn't expecting to be sold anything. Hmm. They were there, they might be getting a free session, um, of three sessions, whatever it is. And they're not expecting a $1,500 sales pitch. I'm not here for this. And that's, of course, you're going to get pushback. Right. Of course, they're going to, with, going to come up with objections because they weren't even, they're not even in the market for personal training. And all of a sudden you're telling them it's going to cost 1500 bucks. And then you start over trying, overcoming objection after objection. And it's no wonder we hate sales as fitness professionals, because all we do is overcome objections because we're simply telling and selling. We're not building the story ahead of time. And in order to do that, you need to build a brand. So I saw this huge opportunity where there are a lot of great sales courses in the industry mm -hmm. focused on, you know, how to sell packages, how to sell, 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 sell. I saw a big opening, a, a missing piece in how do you build a brand and how do you communicate with the consumer more clearly about what you offer before they even meet you so that when they walk in, they know what to expect. Or if they're following you online, how do you communicate more clearly what it is that you do for them as opposed to, and, and the, I mean, how many times have we all, everybody listening, watching, RC, yourself, how many times have you finished up your third session, your third free session? And they're like, no, no, I don't want to purchase. Can you just write down the exercises that you showed me? And that's, that's, they think that's valuable. Right. And you have so much more to offer, but you obviously, you have not done enough to build value in yourself. And that's really the crux of, of what we teach. If I kind of have overarching, it's, there are many, many, what we call the elements of value, things that consumers are looking for, whether it's saving time, looking better, there's, there's hundreds of them, feeling empowered, feeling guided, get, you know, getting guidance. And if we're only telling them one thing and we're just telling and selling and just telling them what we offer, we're missing an opportunity. So I like to, I, I'm really heavy on what's called a positioning statement, which is, I call it I, specific for the fitness industry. I changed it up and I made it ABS, abs. Oh, I see so, what you did there. You yeah, clever, you, like you clever man. Tell us about your, abs. <laughs> you gotta build your abs. So it, what I mean when we say building your abs is first step is the A, the avatar. And mm -hmm. I used to hate the concept of the avatar until I really understood how it can be beneficial. Can you elaborate so, maybe for those of whom, uh, even myself, you know, when you're using this term avatar, what, what does that encompass? Sure. What is, is an avatar? Because I'm thinking of yeah. a little like animated figure kind of thing. And it, it is, it, it, it can be, it can be in your mind. It is, it's because the avatar lives in your mind or on paper, or you, you base it on a real person, but it's basically, it's a fictional person. That's your ideal client, mm -hmm. the client that you can get the best results and that will connect with you the best. The client that if you like working with athletes, it's probably going to be an athlete. If you like working with women who want to lose weight, it's a woman that wants to lose weight. It's kind you of like build, your target audience, low hanging fruit, it, passion right. clients that you but like to work with. Those are your, your people, your, are your, your segment, right? So what you that just said, that's your segment. That's your group of people. So I want to work with gotcha. women that want to lose weight. I want to work with football players. Then you narrow it down. Hmm. I want to work with Jane the overweight woman that wants to lose weight, who likes to read People Magazine. She watches CNN. She likes to take walks. She's resistant to the gym because of X, Y, and Z. She doesn't understand what a carbohydrate is. She's never understood anything about fat. She tried like very getting like granular about who this person is. Mm. Now here's where the magic is with the avatar. And here's where people miss. The magic with the avatar is, well, let me step back. When we post in social media, because that's for most fitness professionals, that's their channel. Yeah, for, a huge for marketing reaching. stream, especially now. Yeah. So what, are we, what do we as fitness professionals typically post? We post content for our friends. Mm -hmm. Look at my other, abs. I'm For fit. other meatheads. <laughs> right. I, I live does, the life. Here's what I'm eating. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the question. Does, that, does your avatar, whoever you came up with, does that avatar want to scroll through Instagram or TikTok to see your abs? And is that going to make them purchase from you? Or 
could you talk specifically about what they struggle with on your post? So when you have an avatar, basically every day you're saying, shoot, I don't know what to post today. Should I post my bicep or what's Jane, my avatar thinking about today? Jane, my avatar probably struggled with what to eat for breakfast this morning. So I'm going to post my top five breakfasts to keep you lean today. Cause that's what my avatar people get scared of the avatar because they think, well, if I'm talking to Jane, then I'm not talking to anybody else, but how many other people also want to know about your five favorite breakfast recipes? A lot, a lot of people. So you need to think more about posting about yourself and think more about posting to that avatar. So every single post you're literally in your post, you're literally talking to that person. You don't say Jane though. <laughs> you, you, you really, you're posting. <laughs> I, I think that even helps just that overwhelm because I, I know even for myself, I'm like, what do I post today? What is it? And just right. being able to have that direction and guidance on whom you're speaking to, what is your audience? Because it is this massive pool of people, right? Especially on the social media. It's like, who are you really targeting? And when you can yep. have that avatar in the back of your mind of, okay, this is who I'm speaking to. This is what they're struggling with. And it goes back to, like you said, selling and telling, but we want to avoid that. We want to have discovery. And as a good fit pro, if you haven't done that discovery versus just telling, you don't know who that avatar is. So I think that's kind of like right. a twofold in what you were saying there all together. Yep, exactly. And you can have multiple avatars and that's fine because Jim, Jane's husband or Jim, the, the weightlifter might also struggle with the same I questions. I really thought you were going to say Tarzan. I'm sorry. You went with the Jane. I thought you were going to say Tarzan, oh, but you went with the Jim. That was, that was Carry low, on. Low fruit, huh? <laughs> and it, it's, you know, cause I, you know, for me personally, I struggle with, and, and trainers that would too, because you have two different avatars. You might have, you might be working in a gym and guess what? There's, fi- there's 15 Janes in your gym and there's 17 Joes who are trying to build muscle and you go, who am I supposed to talk to? Mm -hmm. And the reality is both in some way, shape and form, but choose one that's your primary. Um, you know, I, I, in my business, it's very different where I, I am marketing to in different channels. I am marketing to businesses about marketing services and video production services, but then I'm also marketing to, uh, gyms and fit pros about signing up for my courses. So I have two completely different avatars that I struggle with that all the time. Like, where am I going to spend my energy and what's going to be, you know, what's going to give me the most bang for my buck. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's the same in every industry. It's the same concepts. You're dealing with the same thing. Um, But the reality is just when you're making a post, think about someone else and a question they want answered. Hmm. What does Jane, what does Joe want answered today? And answer that question. There's your post. You're done. That's great. You have to flush your biceps. I mean, unless it, it could be, you, you could just sit there and flex the whole time while you're talking, but that's not ideal. <laughs> not opposed to that as well. And was yeah. that, and, and then the, the B so of the, the abs, B, a, is, a is avatar. B is, a is avatar. B is the barrier. Ooh. Okay. Talk What's to the us barrier? about barriers. What's the barrier preventing the avatar from getting involved in fitness? Mm. Not, there's a difference here, not the barrier to getting fitness results because your solution solves that. So what is their barrier stopping them from getting involved in your program? Mm. So like from the beginning, you're like you said, you're not gonna have to overcome objections because you're troubleshooting that barrier in how you're speaking. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. And it's, it's before you're even in front of them. That's the thing. We wait until they're in front of us. We're telling and selling and we're finding out when they're in front of us, we are cushioning the blow ahead of time. Mm. So the barrier might be they're too busy. So this is even before they even come to the gym. So think of it, this is social media. This is someone that hasn't even come to the gym yet. They come across your post. So the positioning statement is A, avatar, B, barrier. So the post might be something like, hello, overweight Jane. Obviously you don't say that, but hello, overweight general consumer, Jane, in this case. I realize it's really hard to get to the gym and find time to work out. Then the S is the solution. The solution is I make 30, I do 30 minute workouts and I could do it. Well, I'm making this up once a week and we do whatever your magic is. So whatever makes you unique. And that's the key with the S the solution. So the barrier, what's preventing them from getting involved. And the, the solution 
But here's the key with the solution. It's not, I offer personal training in 30 minutes. The key is what makes you different? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily better. You might want to say better. What makes you better and or different than the trainer seven feet from you in the same gym? Because you have to think about all the competition. So with the solution, the key is all of your competition. I like to talk, when you talk about competition, I have a whole entire course on, on competition. Your competition isn't just other personal trainers. Because when we're thinking specifically of Jane, what solutions does Jane have that you're competing with? The Apple Watch is a competitor to you. You don't realize that. You don't necessarily think about it. It's not a direct competitor because it's a different offering. But the Apple Watch is actually competition for your personal training business or your gym membership. Um, a, a hit, any hit program, CrossFit. If you're not teaching CrossFit, you're a personal trainer. A CrossFit gym is your competition. If you are a CrossFit gym, if you're a CrossFit coach, a personal trainer is your competition. And I know a lot of people are going to say, no, 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 it's not. It's a completely different solution. Mm. No, it's but getting the, the same consumer, result. They, they're not seeing it in that way. They're saying, right. I have problems. I want solutions. How do I get them? Yeah. I have $600 a month I want to spend. It's either right. going to be CrossFit or it's going to be a personal trainer, or I'm just going to use my Apple watch and not spend the 600 bucks because I already mm -hmm. own it. Mm -hmm. um, so with your solution, what you have to do is you have to say, this is my solution. I'm going to primarily focus on, my, on these 30 minute sessions so I can get more people through. Um, how is it different than CrossFit? And how would Jane like it better than CrossFit? How would Jane like this better? Well. It, it could be motivation. It could be, there's, there's a hundred different, well, there's, there's 30 things that we talk about in the, what we call the elements of value. Um, it's not mine. I took it from Harvard Business Review, but um, there's 30 elements of value. And you can go through that and you go, I'm going to focus on one, two, and three things. The more elements of value you have, the better. So you can say, I am different slash better than CrossFit because of X, Y, and Z. And in my posts, I'm going to speak to Jane specifically, and I'm going to mention about these three things. That might have been the answer I was thinking when you were speaking about what does separate you, right? I was going to ask if you had a strategy or technique, because I know I was just sitting there and I was like, wait a second, how how am I different? I mean, I feel like I'm funny. Is that enough to like make someone choose me over someone else? Like, would you say that that trick and kind of introspective development be to use those elements that you mentioned and kind of go down that list? Or do you have a different strategy that you'd recommend in helping a fitness professional discover what their differentiators are from their competition? Yeah. The easiest thing to say is Google the 30 elements of value. Um, they can contact me or, and, or you, and I, I'll be happy to email it out. Um, I'll throw the, I have a lesson. I have several different lessons on the elements of value, but I'll, I'll put one of them on YouTube. I'll make that free on YouTube and, and share that. Um, but basically it's, it's, it was done by this company called Bain that does research in marketing mm -hmm. and Harvard business review published it a few years ago. What they found was that of the companies, they researched different companies, they took these 30 elements of value mm -hmm. and they assessed for each of these companies, how many of the elements do they, do they offer in their offering and do they communicate in their messaging? And what they found was the more of these 30 elements that you offer and show, either offer or message, the more successful you will be. So um, Amazon is probably the best. So they, have, they offer convenience, they offer speed, they offer cost savings, um, security and safety is one of them, meaning like, so they, when they, off, they started offering photo storage, that, that's another element of value. I feel safe because I have my pictures stored on the cloud and, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, I think I said convenience already, you know, faster shipping, saving money. You know, there's, there's all those benefits that you willing. And what they found was they actually every year when they, every year or two, when they increase their pricing, they still continue to get just as many people continuing to sign up and not canceling because they have so much value in what they offer that it's worth it. So the more elements of value, um, so go ahead and Google that right now, if you're listening, the more of those elements of value that you can show in your offering, um, the better. Yeah, I love that. Love that. Definitely bookmarking that. Look it up, guys. I myself am, am going to go down that rabbit hole of figuring out what those values are and excited to see that list. Speaking and of to value. To answer your question, actually, one of the elements is humor. 
Okay. Or, See, or I knew it was in there somewhere, being, Rick. Being I knew it was good for something. <laughs> entertainment is one of the elements of value. Are you Absolutely. not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now speaking of value, your course in itself delivers so much value. I feel like it's like this, like holy grail. Of course, <laughs> it's like get the science. That's absolutely crucially important for a fitness professional, right? Understand the mechanics and the science of your role. Obviously, to be a good trainer, but then also. Yeah right? Overcoming those, those sales and marketing. So you can get clients in front of you. I mean, your, your course in itself, you go over understanding the customer marketing one-on-one building the brand, brand positioning, uh, attracting audiences, profitable prospecting. You even chat about copyrights. You go into overcoming objections, as you mentioned, and even into the retention strategies. I mean, y- you didn't miss a valuable no, I, well, nugget in there. I like to but, think we didn't. When someone walks away from completing this course, which uh, confirmed they do also receive CEUs from completion yes. of this marketing, NASM which is and AFA, yep. love that. That's incredible. So not only, I mean, something like this, I feel like someone should complete just from the value of having those skill sets of all those things I just listed off, but also, I mean, nobody's mad again, some CEUs towards no. their certs, right. To keep Absolutely. active. I mean, but with, within all of those, what would you say if you get to encompass it? Because that's such a robust course in like a clause, one clause, what does somebody walk away from this course feeling, um, or knowing if you could just kind of condense it down? I think what you're creating is a concise position for yourself and a Mm. concise ability to understand. And the idea is that that position, positioning statement defines everything that you need to know to market effectively and present effectively to, again, I mentioned this earlier, to avoid objections. Mm -hmm. The goal is you are not overcoming objections you're avoiding objections in the first place because you've done such a great job of marketing to them that they, you've already addressed everything. You offer so much value. Um, I look at it this way. There's, there's only, we try to complicate things when it comes to sales. There's only two things in a consumer's mind when they're considering a purchase. You, me, any consumer, any purchase, there are only two things to consider. How much value am I receiving from the product or the service? How much money does it cost? If the value is down here and the price is up here, let me rephrase that. If the perceived value is down here, the actual value of a product might be up here, Mm -hmm. but based on your presentation, based on the fact that you only told and sold, their perceived value is down here. They don't understand. And you say, it it is worth this. Well, it's not worth it to the client if their perceived value is down here, the price is up here. What you need to do is increase the perceived value by doing a better job of presenting. And that's essentially through this course by understanding who the consumer is, how to position your product properly and how to present and sell the product effectively, you're going to build, we're building value in that process. Hmm. You can't really build value in your product if you don't first understand who the consumer is, who it is that's walking through that door. And there's so much that goes into that. And that's why it's a seven hour course. There's so much that goes into understanding the consumer and there's so many different consumers. So we kind of bucket them out and figure out like who are the different types of people. And there's, there's a lot of different ways to break it out. Um, and we kind of go through that. Um, so I think really, you, you really nailed it with, with kind of talking about learning the science. Um, you know, cause I, I look at it, there's three areas of any business. You know, there's, there's others on the side of these, but they all kind of fill in the three main things. There's the product. So you're building a product. And when you're taking courses and learning science, you're building your product. You're building your service. Absolutely. You're building, we'll just we'll say your offer. Yeah, your skills. You're building those. What's that? Your skills, as far as like the science. Your skills, goes. right. Yeah. Uh-huh. All the science, the skills, everything that you do in a session is part of the product. But that leads you into what you're going to communicate and what the marketing. So the second part is marketing one product two marketing, reaching people with an effective message about how your offer helps them. Because if you, let's just say you built a a theme park on an Island. Sounds far offshore, (laughs) far offshore. No one can see it. You have to reach people with a message about why it's beneficial. Now they don't want to get sick. They don't necessarily want to go across the ocean. They don't want to get, you know, 
sick from the from going on a boat or they don't want to whatever they it's, it's a hassle to get there so now you got to build value because they got to overcome the fact that they don't want to go on that trip then the third part is the sale is actually asking for that purchase so here's the mistake businesses make businesses people even thinking about if you're if you're applying for a job it's the same thing when you're applying for a job you're building your skill set and your knowledge base to be able to present yourself then you have to go out and find a potential employer then the interview is your opportunity to sell yourself. So regardless of whether you're selling a product or selling yourself for a job, it's the same thing. There's only three things involved. The product, which is you. Marketing, which is communicating, reaching people with the message about why, specifically why your product or why you can help them either get fit or if you're looking for a job, how you can help them make more money. Um, and then third is that sale, that interaction with that consumer and really kind of just getting them to sign up or getting them to hire you in that case. Then the mistake we get into is we choose one thing and we base our whole business model around that one thing. So a lot of trainers make the mistake of spending too much time on the science and zero on marketing because they get comfortable with, well, there's memberships. The membership people sell self sessions. So I'll just depend on that. And those are never your best clients. Your best clients are the ones that you have built a communication with. They, they understand your brand. They understand what you're offering, um, not just because that person that got those three sessions it's when they signed up, that's not, that's, they, they don't know what they're coming in for yet. They're not buying based on what you told them. Um, or you might s spend too much time marketing and not enough time on building your product. You know, I, I remember when I was with a, a big box gym, there was one guy who was always celebrated as the best salesperson. And I was like, wow, I can't believe he sold that much. And then I kind of asked somebody, I said, well, if he sells that many sessions every single month, how many does he actually train? And how long does clients, and somebody, and they said, he doesn't train anyone. He just sells. So, you know, then your, if your product isn't any good and you sell, sure, you're going to make a lot of money. That's, that's fantastic. But are you actually, as, as we said at the time, changing lives? Mm -hmm. You're not, you're just marketing and selling. And if your product's no good, you're not actually helping. So, you're, you're either going to be sending, you, you could be spending too much time on your product development on science. You could be spending too much time marketing and you could be spending too much time selling. So you need to kind of have a Venn diagram and all three sales, marketing and product. The sweet spot is somewhere in the middle where you spend time every month, every week on it, on each of those three areas of your business. Yeah, I think that's crucially important. I mean, I know without even asking that you've seen that same painful moment when, you know, highly skilled, talented fitness professionals for whatever reason, which sounds like maybe not focus on some of those other buckets, you know, don't thrive. You know, you're, you're talking the ones that have every certification that's out there from every organization. They've got their master's in Kines, like they have all of the foundations, but it sounds like, you know, we could be not focusing that same attention into the other buckets of, you know, marketing yep. and mastering right. the cell or mastering the lead, uh, and discovery, uh, abs, <laughs> we'll call it from abs, here. Right. Yeah. Master so, the abs, not just science, but master the, the marketing abs as well. I want to play, I'm really excited to play the stoplight game. Yes. I think I may so, have partially answered these already, but I think you did. Yeah. We'll do like a rapid fire stoplight game. Uh, you know, what do these, <laughs> these do fit pros should stop doing, what they should slow down on and where they should run really fast forward. Uh, so red light, I feel like we're playing red light, so, green light here, red light. What should they stop doing, Rick? The biggest thing you should stop doing as a fitness professional is from a marketing perspective and building your brand, building your business, stop posting for your friends. Yeah. Or for the clout. Is that the word that the kids do? The don't do it yeah. for the clout. Do it for the, do it for the avatar. <laughs> You're right. Stop posting your friend for your friends. Start posting for your avatar because okay. your friends. And, and, so go on that note, the problem with posting for your friends and for other trainers is you get a lot of likes with that and it's instant gratification. And, you know, I've worked with some clients and I have some people that are very close with me that we make posts and they may not be effective in terms of getting a lot of likes. They may not get a lot of comments, but the question is how many people are noticing it? How many people are taking in that brand? Are, are they connecting with it? And how many people are signing up because of that brand building? And 
the number of likes doesn't always ref, isn't always reflective. Is 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 sorry, the number of people that sign up isn't always reflected by how many likes they're on. Absolutely, absolutely, couldn't you, agree with you more. If you have a strong group, you know, if you have a strong email list, and and that that person might not like your post, but they may click on your link in bio, and they may download that free guide or get a free session or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're offering your lead magnet. So you need to stop. It's it's a drug. It's a good, getting the likes. And the comments Absolutely. is a drug. Chemically proven, it, it, it is, yeah. Yeah, so get off the drug <laughs> and start posting <laughs> to your avatar. Go get clean, people. Stop doing yeah. the post for likes and start doing it for strategy. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Love it. it. Where hurt. should they yell have a second yellow account. Light. Or maybe have a second account. Start uh, true, a second true, true, account. True. Multiple different account. accounts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That feel, we still want you to feel good. Yeah, don't take that the right. wrong way, people. Feel good. Get your <laughs> likes. We want you to be happy. You don't. <laughs> we all like it. We all like the likes. Yeah. Uh, yellow light. What do we need to ease up on? What should we do a little bit less of? Um, I'm going to speak generally about, through, from my experience working with many, many fitness professionals over the years and in, in different levels, Stop working on your product as much. So slowing down. So slow down. Slow diet. down on the science. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I was teaching a certification, and trainers would say, "I've I've got six national certifications," and I'd be like, "What does that get? What did the second one get you that the first one didn't? You're certified. You know you you understand the mechanics it. of how the limb moves. <laughs> right. We, you got it. Now, is there value in the seventh? Probably, I'm sure there is. Absolutely, yes, of course. yeah. Is there value in getting um, like a medical fitness credential of some sort? All to the work specializations with and things as All well. All the specializations mm -hmm. are vital, Incredible, fantastic. Right? But don't do that instead of a marketing course. Do it after a marketing course. Whether it's, mm -hmm. I'm not just pitching mine. I, I prefer you take mine, but um, you know, I recommend it as well. <laughs> right. Work on your business. And somebody that I worked with, a mentor of mine years ago, said, how much did you work on your business today? And I was like, that's all I did. No, what did you do today? And I kind of went on to say, I did this and I made a post and whatever. She goes, no, that's working in your business. What did you do to work on your business to improve the performance of your business? And I kind of like took me back. I didn't do anything to, to improve my brand, my business. So now it's always, are you working in your business or are you working on your business? And you should do both. You have to do both. So the science, the specializations is working in your business. The marketing, spending time on a, a content calendar for social media, that's working on your business. And it's mm -hmm. going to help you grow. Would you say that also, you know, I would tie into on your business, would you say that those, those soft skills, those, um, interpersonal developments being that we are really in the relationship business, um, like those types of developments as well would Perhaps. fall into on your business. Maybe that could look like reading a book about communication, um, or personality types or yeah, <laughs> things right. like that. And learning how to work with people and getting people to like you for say, I guess, you know, that, that golden rule of. Um, people buy from people they like and, and building relationships right. with people and rapport building. Right. And not just mirroring as, as the example, a lot of people use, you know, that that's great, but people generally, I don't think people really understand how to mirror properly and do it effectively. So it's like, just really <laughs> start it's going painful deeper. to watch a mirror. They're like, you yeah. cross your arms. I cross my arms. Yeah, you right. laugh. I laugh. Right. <laughs> well, is there, I don't know if, if you're value, right. or mirroring or just <laughs> <laughs> right. And there's, there may be value in that if done, if done properly, there could be value in that, but generally it's not done properly. So, you know, you can't just take that and run with it, but yeah, there's, and, and that's why, you know, in our course, that's why we offer, you know, that's why we have copywriting in there. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have understanding the customer's journey, you know, where are they coming from? What's their starting point? Um, we touch on it, you know, at a very high level compared to other content that would be available or books, but um, it's absolutely vital to understand where people's brain is where they are coming when they walk in the door right. because if you don't understand that you're 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 just shooting in the dark telling and selling yeah and then green light <laughs> this is a really fun game green light where should we run super fast what direction are we going towards fast as we can rick you are writing your positioning statement okay so that's your out you're, you are creating that avatar you're creating a clear concise message about how your solution solves their problem and how it does it better than other people. 
And with that, the green, here's the green light part, because we already talked about doing the positioning statement. So you're doing that positioning statement. With that positioning statement, you are now going to, whether it's your current social media channels or you're creating new accounts, you are going 100% all in speaking to your avatar with every post. We wake up in the morning, you think, what am I going to post today? What is my avatar having trouble with this morning? I'm going to talk to my avatar about that. And that will resonate with many, many people. Awesome. Great, great action items there. I wrote it down. <laughs> I'll follow up with you. I feel like I, I know you're going to hold me accountable because we're going to pass each other in the office and you're going to ask right. me if I did it. So I'm going to be That's ready. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you selected uh, some three really interesting words for our fiber foundations moment. We call these three foundations, right? The, the keys to success, these links between bridging the gap and, and where you are and where you want to be in your career. Uh, no surprise, your three words that you selected for these foundational pillars are product marketing and sales product well, actually, marketing I, and I switched sales. it up a little oh you switch so it I up thought, on me I, I, I guess, let me know let the people know what, so, what words are we bringing you know instead? why you know why because i know people don't like to hear sales ah and when you think of product people always say oh i don't sell a product i sell personal training i sell a service i change mm -hmm. I, I sell changing lives which is which is so hard to wrap our minds around as the fit pro because we get into the industry as we've said we want to change lives Reality right. is, hate to break it to you, at some point or other in your career, you discover, oh, shit, this is actually a sales job. But th that just Has comes with it. It's, that's Has just is what it is. You can't change lives if you cannot master the art of selling. Like, let's just call it what it is, right. whether we call it a yep. lead or a discovery or a journey. Like, you still got to have a it's financial sales. transaction of money going back and forth to you have a career that you yeah. love, that you can change lives. You got to do sales, you know? Right. Right. But what word were you um, going to so put in there? And instead of that? product, instead of product, I just said, you got to build, you got to build your foundation. You got to build your offering. So you could say offering, but you're, you're building what you're going to sell. Okay. And they're like, I already know. I, I, I know I understand 12, 12 reps of three sets does this. And I understand that 15 reps does that. And if you do more than 20 minutes of cardio, you get this result. If you do hit, hit you do get this result. Mm -hmm. Well, that's then you got you got to you got there's got to be more to your product than that you got to build around that and have a true understanding of of like those, those specializations so you do you have to build your knowledge you have to build what your offering is um then instead of marketing i switched that up because people are scared of marketing they think it's it's there's so much to it when there really isn't marketing is communicating mm, I the love second that. word is love communicate that. so How, offering communicating how are you, how and where are you communicating? Mm. And we didn't even touch on where, you know, with what's the ideal. We don't I guess they're just going to have to take the course, that. Rick. They're going to have to That's take the right. course for that. We don't have that much time on the podcast right. to exactly. learn the most effective strategies. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's number two. And, and with, with communicate the how and the where, one of the big things and go, going back to Fitbiz toolbox and the, the academy, the reason I built it the way I built it was because when I was in school, I realized that this is the foundation of any system that's out there. So there's a lot of people that say, I'll sell you a system that's guaranteed to get you six figures, to guaranteed to get you seven figures. But their system was built with their clientele. Their system was built with their personality. Their system was built with their situation, their community, their state, their city, their, their town in their equipment, their system was built for them. Right. And we aren't all them. So my goal is to teach the foundation because marketing sales, all of that, it's all based on the same foundational principles. So my goal is to teach the foundational principles. Once you understand the foundational principles, you can create your own system. And you can look at any system and go, that's not a special system. That's, that's an avatar. That's called segmentation. That's this. And you, you, cause you, cause you understand, once you understand the foundational theory and concepts behind a system, you can make your own system. Mm -hmm. Maybe you start with someone else's system and that's fine, whatever, but you take it and you go, I understand what segmentation is and that segment doesn't work for me. I'm going to go find a different segment. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to base it on gender. I'm going to base it on age. I'm going to base it on this. Cause I, cause I can, cause I understand that now.
Yeah. Cause you understand your avatar and, right. and all the other things that come with it. And you can kind of fine tune maybe that structure and customize it to what makes right. sense for you, your product, your business, your value. Exactly. And that's why Beautiful. systems fail. That's why, that's why I, and that's why I don't teach a system. I flat out do not teach a system at all. I will never teach a system um, because of that reason. So number three, you want number three? Number three, I think we changed the word from sales unless my little rant yes. about we technically are in sales. <laughs> We're going to select the but third. But here's the key. We're all, they have, no one wants to hear about sales. They don't want to hear that word. So yeah, that's they why already I stopped it. listening after I probably went on about my right. you're in sales. The they truth. were like, screw this the lady. Truth. No, I'm not. Don't tell, them, don't tell them the truth. Don't do it. So instead of sales, my word is interact. Mm, uh, great choice. Great so choice. Build, Talk to us about build, interaction, how yeah, that's important. You, you build a product, then you communicate what that product does to somebody to what that, sub, what that product or service does for somebody, I should say. But what you just did was soften up the sale. You just built value. You still have to sell it. You still have to interact with that person. And that's the scariest part. Um, and, and that's what you have to understand that you may need to spend most of your time learning to interact, learning to communicate to your point. Um, read, on, read up on books about communication um, because that interaction not a sales process. If you've, and that's the key. If, and I never, as a fit pro, I never, ever felt like I sold anything mm -hmm. ever. And I was successful. I never did because I foundationally interacted with people and built relationships. And then it was just like, you know, they, they sometimes would ask me, well, so how much does it cost for this? I never had this, just this, okay, cool. Um, you know, oh, do you have a smaller package maybe? But because you spend the effort communicating properly and interacting and not just going in for the sale. I'm going to, I'm going to go close this person. No, no, no. Go interact with them. Right. Go have a conversation. And get, in, in many cases, you can get them to ask. Uh -huh. This is, this sounds really good. This sounds really valuable. It sounds really interesting. How much does it cost? Right. You provided a solution. You provided you listened and discovered and communicated and right. knew that exactly like you said, you're providing a solution from what you heard them say and speaking it back to them. Yeah. And I think within so, that interacting as well, that is a sales technique, right? The points of contact, you don't ask someone for a sale or even approach that until you've had X amount points of interaction. So I think right. interaction, not, not just interaction, but having quality interaction. As That's well. a key point mm -hmm. you just brought up that I didn't mention. Um, Cause I remember I, de I dealt with it myself. Um, you feel like when you're getting that free session or that third free session or the person bought three sessions for a low price or whatever it is, and you're delivering you're, you're you got 10 minutes left with this person. And if you don't close it, that's it. And then you're pissed off at them and you never want to talk to them again. That's the exact wrong approach. That's the opposite of what you should be doing. Because we've all heard the term lead magnet, right? Mm -hmm. That free session, that three, that, that free session, the three sessions for $99, that's a low barrier offer. That's a lead magnet. That person that's in front of you, if they don't purchase from you, that is a lead for you to contact regularly. Hey, have you been in three times a week the way you talked about? Oh, here comes the sales pitch. And then you hang up and you don't sell. Or right. let them answer you don't solve anything. You ask them and take your notes, take the notes right. trainers, not just on what their PR was and their, their metrics for that session, write down. What was their children's name? Did they have something right. coming up next yep. week? Cause then what is that personable touch that out of nowhere, that trainer that you met with three times, two months from now says, Hey, how did Charlie's soccer game go at that tournament? And they're right. like, Oh my God. Like, how did that person remember that? It's like, you don't have to make it harder again than it is. Like it genuinely care about people. I think is yep. the piece. If you got into this industry to help people do that on the biggest level possible care, reach out. And like you said, don't try and sell to them to show them that you care that you're in their corner. Right. Cause in my mind, that's what a trainer is anyways. They're, they might yep. actually be testing you. It's like, you ever think about that trainer? Like maybe they needed someone in this journey that is going to hold them accountable. That is going to remember the things about them. That is going to be there. Like they got to spend time with you. Is this person cool? Yep. Does this person care about me? Or do they just want my money? There's so right. many trainers and fit pros out there. Like you said, there's competition. They'll just go to the Apple watch. 
but yeah. it's that, that additional detail there. If you care about people, make sure that they know you care. And then, like you said, when you ask them for $1,500, it's, it's nothing because they know that they will get accountability, that you yep. are listening to them beyond just great work. You did 10, one, two, three, four, like right. people can count. They don't need you to count. They need you to care about yep. their, their life and, and their wellness so that you can get them to their physical right. results that they desire. Yep. Cause here's that, here's that $1,500. Your value has got to be up here and counting is down here. Yeah. Well below $1,500. <laughs> well below. So counting is definitely not a value. Hire a kindergartner to count to 10 people. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, I do want to finish up. We ask everyone, I'm excited to hear your answer. What do you wish you would have had known? Take us back. You have so much experience in so many different departments within our industry. You wear a lot of hats. What do you wish you would have had known with all of that together that you would give a younger self advice on? Wow. That is such a tough question. And I think I wish <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing this to sell on purpose, but I wish I would have known. And that this is literally, I love saying literally, literally the reason I built Fitbiz toolbox was because when I was I talk, talked about being sitting in that class, I thought to myself, I wish I would have known 10% of this information. When I was a personal trainer, I would still be a personal trainer today. If that were the case. I would never have taken that jump to fitness manager. I probably wouldn't have jumped over to be, I loved every job that I've ever done. Um, but if I knew this information, I probably would be so successful as a trainer that I would never have left training because this, this information is so powerful. And that's really, I, I built Fitbiz toolbox because of that specific question. That's exactly everything in there is exactly what I wish I would have known as a trainer. Yeah, that that's incredible. That's enough for a natural pitch there. I mean, guys, <laughs> guys, go get the course Fitbiz toolbox sales and marketing Academy. You have a vault with just a plethora of resources that they're in there as well. Once you're, um, you know, participating in the course, because the last thing we want to do, you know, we want to, we want to connect you again. That's the intention of this podcast right. of all of our mission is connecting you to that next level of success. And, um, that would hurt my heart and anyone that genuinely cares about changing lives is to see you not excel in your career and do something you love and have to get out of this awesome industry of health and yeah. fitness, just because, you know, we know not what we don't know. Right. And it's not our expectation to know how to market, to know how to create an app, to all these things that you mentioned and you go over and that course that are equally as important to help you succeed and, and become a very successful, successful fit pro. So ultra. Oh, oh, ooh, ultra. Oh, I like that. Ultra successful. Get, get ultra rich. Google the definition <laughs> of an ultra rich person. That's the level we want you to be on as a fit yes. pro. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> With your science and skills combined. Well, Rick, always a pleasure. Thank you for, for everything you do in our industry, for taking the time to share your knowledge around these marketing strategies today yep. with us. And uh, thank you again for always making the audio on this podcast sound great. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you again. Got it. Chat soon. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed something from today's conversation, let us know by giving this episode a like, chatting in the comments, and sharing it with your friends. We always love to hear from you, so you can send email messages to podcast at F-I-B-R dot F-I-T and connect with us on Instagram at FitBridge podcast for even more exclusive content. Special thanks to our friends at Winner Productions for all things audio and post edits. And on behalf of the entire staff here at Fiber, it's been my absolute pleasure helping bridge community to opportunity.